Welcome back to In The Shadow, guys. Today, I'm gonna to be going over a very core and key system to basically any YouTuber, content creator, enterprise, business, and that's your storage. And what we're gonna be actually doing here on In The Shadow is upgrading and working to upgrade our storage system. From right now, we actually have a capable of about 48 terabytes, and we're actually gonna be working to get up to 96 terabytes. And the way we're actually gonna do that is by some of these systems here I have in front of me. And that's basically what I'm gonna be doing today is in this introduction video, I'm gonna go over what our plans are for storage server, what our plans are to use for an operating system, what our plans are you know, to utilize this and how we actually utilize the data in our systems and why it actually requires us to have a 96 terabyte server. So like I said, let's hop in, let's figure some of this stuff out, let's go over it all. And I'm gonna just say right now, there's plenty of things that I'm still learning, I'm gonna be telling you guys, there's a lot of stuff here that the whole team is learning about and how things work. If, you, you know, if you're an expert in any of the things I'm about to come up and talk about, please leave a comment down below. Let us know some of the information. If there's something I'm getting wrong, that, that's the whole part of this community, right? We, we're here to learn from each other and grow from each other and that's really the whole concept of In The Shadow is that we wanna you know, benefit from one another and let's grow together. So I'm gonna jump in first off over here to the right hand side, guys. We've got the Dell R510. Now, you're probably thinking, why a Dell R510? That's a few generations behind. Now, yes, it is a few generations behind, but the great thing is, is that these are actually pretty cheap nowadays, especially on some server recycling places, you know, server monkeys, server supply. You can get them on eBay. They're around on Craigslist. They're a great machine for storage, especially if you can get a hold of these 12 bay models. The main reason being is that you got 12, three and a half inch drives in a 2U chassis but I'm gonna go ahead and open this up real quick. There's actually a nifty little feature in here that a lot of people don't know about. There's actually an internal bay to hold two and a half inch drives, as you can see right here. And we'll get in more into the depth of this, but this is kind of why I chose the R510 for our storage server and to kind of be our storage core. Now adding onto the R510 will be three expansion units, as you see over here to the you know, left-hand side for you, my right-hand side. And these storage expansion units, I should say, are actually plugged in direct multipath, I should say, with SAS. They actually each have two controllers. One controller each goes into the SAS, I should say the HBA, the host bus adapter on the back of the R510. And basically between all the drives that are up here, all the drives that are in the expansion units, all of this is actually set up as JBOD, just a bunch of drives. So FreeNAS, which is what we will be using for our operating system, will see every drive natively and be able to interact with it. Now this is very key if you're, you know, you're into FreeNAS and you're into ZFS, things like that. It's very key that it actually is able to see those drives so that way it can manage them properly, do the smart reads and actually let you know if there are boot sectors, or sorry, if there's sectors wrong on the drive, block sectors and things like that. So that way you can replace the drive if one goes bad. And if it's handled by a RAID controller and you've got ZFS, don't be wrong, you can learn like that, but it's not how it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna kind of dig in I wanna go over the, what we're doing here, what the ideas have. Like I prefaced before, I'm not an expert in all this. I'm learning this as I go. The whole team here is learning this. We're kind of making this as a platform for us to store all these videos that we have coming up. We've got a lot of review videos going on. We've got a lot of different concept idea videos. We're hoping to get some tour videos going on from some different places and locations. Maybe show you how businesses handle their data centers, their different you know, environments. That's what we're trying to bring in. To start that all, we need a place to store it all and be able to work from as a unit. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's remove the nice plastic shielding. For some reason, I always, I always forget to install those back in. Now, everything's already installed in. I'm gonna go ahead and slowly start to pull out some of this, this stuff in here. I'm not gonna pull out everything because there are a lot of things that are plugged in, but I do wanna show you guys and kind of reverse engineer what the idea was and what we were planning here. So first off, and no, I'm not gonna pull out the heat sinks right now, I'm not gonna do that. They already got thermal paste. I know, crazy, right? But no, I'm not. <laughs> so both inside these, we've got Intel Xeon 5660s. And that means that these are pretty nice processors, but for those of you that don't know what a 5660 is, that is a six core processor, all right? And it's built, I believe, I'm going off the top of my head, I believe it's either Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge. I wanna say Sandy Bridge, it could be Ivy Bridge. But yes, it is an older processor, but it is six cores. It is running at about 2.9 gigahertz. All right, we've got two of those with hyper-threading. And yes, we will be trying to do some things and be enabling you know, the updates on the BIOS and stuff to hopefully mitigate you know, all those side channel attacks. But I'm really not too worried about that with this being a storage server. On top of that, we've got eight 16 gig sticks of RAM in here giving us 120 gigs of RAM. So in total, we've got two six core processors with hyper-threading, 128 gigs of RAM. 
that's so far what we're doing for our processing and our, you know, our oomph that a whole, you know, back behind this. Now up here, you can't really see it, and I promise you, as we you know, start doing this build and things like this, this is just an introduction. We'll get more into some of this, but right down in here, I've got two USBs. They're both 32 gig USBs, and basically what, the reason I have two is USB is not the best thing for FreeNAS to run on, and I'll be the first to say that. It's not. I've learned that, I've been doing some research, and yes, you can run it on there, but what I've found out is that it really matters about the quality of USB you run, and also to make sure you set it up as a mirrored USB. That is why I actually have two USBs up here, up front, is I wanna make sure that if one were to fail, the other one's mirrored, so that way I don't lose any configurations, I'm not worried about restoring. Now, I will be honest, what's really great with ZFS and things like that, it doesn't take a long time or take much to actually go ahead and re-import that pool and get things set up. Now you, you know, depending on actually if you back up your you know, system database, but that's for a whole nother video, I'm not gonna get into that right now. We're gonna focus on this like I was saying. So that explains where our boot, you know, our boot uh, drives are gonna be. That's our operating system off of two 32 gig USBs. Now, I'm gonna come actually over here to the PCI lanes before I jump over to the SSDs because the main reason is, is the SSDs have actually been quite a talking point and there's something that I really wanna bring up this video because it's something I'm trying to learn and I'm doing research in and I'm still figuring it out. So let's jump over to the PCI lanes. I wanna talk about the different cards in here and go over what, and I'm gonna pull out each one so I can let you know what's going on, why we have it, what it's doing. And the first one I'm gonna start with is the RAID card, all right? Now, a lot of people have been asking me, what RAID controller are you using? What are you doing and how, why are you using that one? Well, so to give you guys an idea, I'm actually using an H200 from Dell. I'll go ahead and pull this out. And this H200 is actually flashed to an LSI model Firmware, And what that means is this allows me to utilize this as a JBOD host bus adapter. And which means all 12 of these drives up here will then now be seen as just a bunch of drives and be seen natively by FreeNAS. That's, that's exactly what we're wanting. Now if we come back here to more of the business end, and my business end I meant, you know, this slot up here is actually meant more for RAID controllers. As you can see, there's a bigger one that normally goes here. But as we go back here, this is the business end. This is where we actually have some I.O. We can plug some things in. Now, we'll start off with the, the big boy at the top here. Now, this is actually a 10 gigabit card, an Intel 10 gig card, dual SFP plus. And this is actually going to allow us to go ahead and set up 10 gig iSCSI to all of our hosts. We do have a uh, Ubiquiti USG switch that's gonna be coming in. I believe it's called a X16G. Uh, I'll have to look that up. I can't quote it off the top of my head, but pretty excited about that because that's gonna allow us to run a really fast internal iSCSI network. And it also was managed, which is really nice. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and, while we're waiting to get that switch in, this is actually the quad-core NIC. And the quad-core NIC, well, I should say quad, <laughs> sorry, quad port, quad uh, one gig NIC, allows us to run gigabit iSCSI right now, and I'll end up taking four of these. We'll set up multipath. I do have a small switch right now that allows us to run some minor management and do some things that is really awesome for managing you know, iSCSI, but it's, like I said, it's one gig. This is 20 gig. Well, I should say 10, but dual 10 gig. You get the point. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. And now the final part is the actual connector to connect in the JBOD units these expansion bays, and these expansion bays are connected by SAS. And that's what these, these little guys are right here. I'm gonna let, let them get a nice focus on it for us real quick. And if you see here, so these are SAS connectors, and as we go in through this build, I'll go ahead and you know, go over what this is, but these connectors allow up to six gigs a second on each one, and it will actually connect in our JBOD unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of put this all back in, put this all back together and kind of sit here and explain what each part is. Yeah, it does take a little bit to get them back in, but that's all right. And that's why they're kind of all in a certain order too, dude. Due to the actual length and size of these PCI slots, it was kind of hard to get some of them in. So that's why like the quad NIC actually has to go in kind of in a weird way, like this. But that's all right. Just because it doesn't fit one way doesn't mean it can't fit another. That's why you got to what we're doing right now, it's kind of prepping. We're kind of trying to figure things out, figure out where stuff can go. How can we utilize things? You know, that's, that's what this is, out, this is all about. It's, it's, it brings me back to watching a lot of like those old shows like Orange County Choppers and things like that when they're doing fabrication, you always do mock-up, you know? 
that's, that's what that reminds me of, is right now we're mocking everything up, we're making sure everything fits, we're putting it all in its place, really before you know, we decide to put it in its permanent home and you know, that's where it's gonna live forever. That's kind of what we're doing here right now. So let me go ahead and get this last part in. Now, one of the key things is, is if you've got, if you've got the actual ability to, make sure you plug in these little uh, cables. They're, they're important. I mean, I know it may not seem like much, but every little cable, especially if you can track where it goes and it, you know, it's supposed to go to the RAID controller so that way the motherboard can monitor it and do things, it's very important. All right. Now let's get to the last and final piece. You know, I, I'm not gonna spend much time really on these JBOD units. I, I really wanna spend some time on these, uh, these solid states. So right now, let me go ahead and unplug these. I've got two solid states, which, are, which I kinda wanna bring up of an interest, is I've got two 256 gigs. In my original post, I was gonna do 120s. I decided upon two 256 gigs. Now, they're not the biggest and best, 256 giggers, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that they are any of that, it just, I had them, I wanted to use them. But what I'm coming to find out is I, I have some people telling me that with the amount of RAM I have, I won't need an L2 arc and I won't need a slog, or a slog. But the other thing I'm learning is that a slog is best to have actually a mirrored array set, so that way in case of a power event or something happens, that you don't lose data because that's actually your write cache. And so that's why they actually recommend, you know, running two or running them in mirror. So if one were to die, or you know, go just stop responding, you have the other one to respond there. Now, what I'm learning about L2 Arc is that it's necessary, but it really depends on the data set, and then it also depends on RAM and a few other things. Now, I don't know completely, and that's why I'm kind of wanting to talk about this here at the end, is I want to know what your thoughts are. You know, if anybody has some information on, you know, maybe can point us in the right direction. Do, do we even need these? Could I use them as boot drives? Like, I'm all up for learning more and doing more, and that, that's kind of why we're here. Is, I kind of need to be pointing in the right direction so that way maybe as we go forward and we're doing these videos, we can all help each other. So if you do know, you know, you got some recommendations, you really, you know, you're saying, hey, you should do this or that, please leave it down in the comments. Let me know on Twitter. Let me know on Reddit. Let any of us know. As you, you know, you go, you can go over to the In the Shadow webpage. You can find any of us in the About page. You can find out all of our social medias, what we do, how we do it. Feel free to interact with any of us. That's why we're here. We're trying to learn just as much as y'all. And that's, you know, that's kind of like the whole thing of why I do these videos and why I'm trying to, you know, create this community. I guess that's why we've all tried to start creating this community is just really to help ourselves grow and help others grow. All right, I'm gonna get that back in there. Now that that's done, I'm gonna put this all back together. The JBUD unit's pretty straightforward. It is a drive. Let me get this back in real quick before I, it's just a bunch of drives. Oh, help if I put it in the right way. It's just a bunch of drives that are plugged in through a, a back plane that then use some RAID controllers in the back that connect via SAS up to here. It doesn't do really anything special. There's no networking. Everything's actually done by this system. Um, the other JBOD units do daisy chain. You can daisy chain up to two of them onto one system. So in total, you could have one system, two else onto it, which would give you a total of three. That's how we're getting our 48 drives, is we've got 12 in our main R510, and then an additional 36 from the extra, you know, IBM expansion 3000s. So that's it, guys. I, that's all I really wanted to talk about today. I just wanted to kind of go over this. I hope this was an interesting video. I hope this, you know, answered some questions. You know, let us, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is I hope it helped you get your foot forward going, going forward with your storage server. And that's kind of what we're here for is I want to show you what I'm doing, learn from my mistakes. Maybe we can grow together. It'll be awesome. And, and last and not least, um, happy holidays, everybody. It's, as you can see, I've got a Christmas tree kind of over here to my, my left-hand side. It's awesome. I love the holiday season. It's, I'm always about giving. And, and during this time of year, it's just great to see everybody doing so much. So, as always, guys, I'll see you in the lab, and make sure you go, you click subscribe, hit the little bell so you see what's going on, and everything else that's going on with, with life has just been crazy, but make sure to follow us, keep up, we've got so much stuff going on, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to stop now, because it's, it's actually crazy, there's just so many moving parts, thanks once again for all the support, I'll see you in the lab.